What's up everyone? I'm Ryan the Cyber Hobbit, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. Unfortunately, about three or four months ago, I broke one of my 1-4 skill helmets. Not pointing any fingers... Um, <laughs> it was the War Mask of the Morgul Lord, the um, nice Witch King 1-4 scale helmet. And so today, in this video, I'm going to try to repair it. And I know there's a lot of people out there who have 1-4 scale helmets, so maybe this could help you if you have ever broken one of yours as well. So, let's get to it. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Okay, just to show you what I'm dealing with here. So this is what broke. It's not the actual helmet, but it's the stand instead. And there is a nice chunk missing which unfortunately I did look around on the ground for and I couldn't find it. I'm thinking possibly my cat had a little fun with the part after the fact. So the first step is to fill in the missing part with some epoxy sculpt, which is basically a putty-like material that comes in two parts. And when you mix the two parts together, it begins to harden. It takes about 24 hours for it to fully cure, so you can take your time with it. And as you would imagine, the idea here is to try my best to fill in and recreate the edge that is missing. I started by rolling a small ball that I thought was about the size of the missing piece and then using my fingers to slowly mold it. By the way, the secret letter is I. Once I had the general shape done, I then took a prong of a plastic fork and used it as my tool to essentially sculpt this extra little edge. And then from there, it was just a bunch of rinse and repeating, switching between using my fingers to help smooth the surface and the fork prong to help guide the epoxy. After about 20 minutes or so, I finally had something I was pretty happy with. I just made sure that from all angles, it looked as close as I could get it to the real thing. It's better to have more than you need than less, because after waiting 24 hours for it to fully cure, I could then move on to sanding. For sanding, I went with a 220 grit piece of sandpaper and essentially sanded until I could no longer feel any bump between the cured epoxy and the normal part of the display stand. I didn't really mind if I ended up sanding a bit too far into the display stand as I knew I was going to be painting this anyway. And here's what it looked like when I was done. Basically as smooth as I could get it. I know that it's not perfect, but I was pretty happy with the result. For painting, I first started with a satin Rust-Oleum Black. This was the paint that I had guessed that it looked like, and then I even asked around on the Lord of the Rings Collectors Facebook group, and this is what most people recommended. Though after it had dried, it just didn't really look right to me. It just had way too much gloss in it. So then the next paint I tried was a black flat Rust-Oleum paint. But again, I ended up with results I didn't like either. It just was too flat and lacked the shine that it was supposed to have. Then I had a recommendation from a member of the Lord of the Rings Collectors Facebook group to try this Design Master Flat Black. And although it was definitely closer, it still was just a little off. It almost had more of a gray than black look to it. So then rather than put layer after layer of the wrong paint on, I decided it was time to do some tests with as many black paints as I could find. And then I chose this one which actually happened to be the Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss. And then if you look here, it actually does look pretty similar. So then one more round of paint. And then can you guess? Wrong. I was so frustrated, I didn't even film the result of this one. So then the next day, without filming, I just decided to see what would happen if I put a very light coat of the Rust-Oleum Flat Black on top. And to my surprise, it actually wasn't that bad. Maybe I was just tired of dealing with it, but I think it's pretty close. It definitely has more of a gloss than the original, but I think it's close enough for me. So to summarize, I ended up using a Rust-Oleum semi-gloss and then added a very light coat of the Rust-Oleum flat black on top. This definitely isn't a perfect fix, but considering I started with a giant chunk of it missing, I'd say it's not that bad. And if someone from Weta Workshop happens to see this video, I would love if you could leave a comment saying what's the exact paint to use. So anyway, I know this video might have been pretty boring to most of my regular viewers, but I'm hoping this can at least help someone out there. 
Sorry for the shorter video, and I hope you have a great Monday. Until next time, bye-bye.